morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you're calling in from. Uh, I'm Kevin Barnard, a co-lead of FathomNet. I'm also a software engineer at Ambari. Um, and I'm going to be talking for the next 15 minutes or so uh, very briefly about the FathomNet model zoo. And in particular, uh, how we've been moving it from this GitHub um, repository into this, this hugging face organization. Uh, once I wrap up, I'm going to be handing it over to Lonnie, who's going to get into some of the details about the actual models that we have available on the zoo. So you can uh, go ahead and check those out. But feel free to follow along as I'm going through this. Uh, I'm going to talk very briefly about um, you know, some of the steps that we've taken and the objective of the, the model zoo. And then it'll be more of a demonstration of uh, the Hugging Face community that we've been putting together. All right. So when we were setting out to build FathomNet, um, you know, we, we weren't really just trying to create this database where folks could bring their, their you know, imagery and their annotations um, in order to, you know, facilitate these conversations about the data itself. Uh, we also wanted to extend the scope of FathomNet to include, you know, what are you doing with the data, right? So you know, as you're going through and, um, you know, finding this data, pulling it down, training machine learning models with it, um, you know, for your particular use case, we wanted to, you know, create this platform, um, which is the FathomNet model zoo, right? So, you know, this, this core objective is to, uh, you know, provide this platform to share, find, and experiment with these machine learning models trained using FathomNet data. Right. So if anybody is training a model with that data, what we'd love to see is, you know, a community where you can contribute that model uh, back, you know, upload it to this FathomNet model zoo, add a little bit of a description about it. So other folks who are interested in, uh, you, you know, maybe using that model can can find it um, and then also experiment with it using their own data. Right. And this is getting to this, this sort of core goal of promoting reusability of models across various workflows. It's a very, very common scenario where you know, an individual will have a particular use case, they train up a machine learning model for that, um, but, uh, you know, maybe they're only using it in that particular workflow, when in fact it could be used by, you know, somebody else who would be interested in a similar model, right? So, um, you know, what the FathomNet model zoo really we hope to accomplish is having this space where uh, people in the FathomNet community and the data science community uh, at large can reuse the, the, uh, the models generated by uh, other people in the community. All right, so uh, as Kikani indicated, we've been moving from a GitHub repository. You might have seen that at um, github.com slash FathomNet slash models. Um, but we've been moving from GitHub, which was really just a big table in a readme um, that had you know one line per model, a little bit of a description about that model, and then a link, uh, link out to the model weights um, to a more integrated solution. And uh, we turn to Hugging Face. If you're not familiar with Hugging Face, uh, Hugging Face gives you a nice ability to create a community where you can have, um, you can sign up, you can you know, create an account here, log in. Um, there's a little button at the top right that says request to join this organization. So, and you can join the organization, uh, be able to contribute models, include, uh, you know, more uh, fine-grained descriptions about how those models were trained, the data that, that were used, uh, things of that nature. Uh, but then also to create these uh, spaces. Um, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Right? But uh, one of the, the really important things that we identified as a need for the FathomNet model zoo was to define these model cards. Uh, these are these textual descriptions of you know, what kind of model that you have, uh, what kind of data it was trained on, what kind of data it's recommended to be used for. Um, and, you know, sort of the normals of training statistics, uh, evaluation metrics, things uh, that folks who are interested in um, sort of maximizing the performance of these models would be interested in, uh, or just kind of having an idea of how well this uh, particular machine learning model is going to perform on uh, some validation set of data. Um, and then also, you know, importantly, some instructions on how you can actually spin up this model, deploy it for your own use case so that you can, uh, you know, use it within your own workflow. Um, so this was a really important thing that we wanted to, to promote from the get-go, you know, moving into Hugging Face as, um, you know, this is extremely important for people who are looking to find a new model and then uh, use that, right? Um, if you don't have the context of everything that was going into the training of the model, it can be hard to understand uh, where that model is going to perform well. Um, and then finally, as I hinted at before, there's uh, this ability in Hugging Face to create these spaces. Uh, these are really lightweight web applications that you can use to uh, test out these different machine learning models. Uh, these are very, very flexible, so you can uh, tailor these to whatever kind of model that you have. But in many cases, currently on the model zoo, we have uh, you know, this application where you can um, 
bring up this interface. Uh, you can you know select an example image at the bottom there, uh, hit submit, and then you can see what the uh, output of the model is, or indeed you can uh, upload your own image and then uh, you know, see how a particular model is going to work on your your data. Um, so again, this is towards that experimentation goal, right? If you have your own data, but you have this you know, wide zoo of models um, to choose from, how do you choose which one uh, might be uh, you know, fitting to your use case? Uh, so you can check it out here. It's uh, hf.co slash fathomnet or huggingface.co slash fathomnet. Um, and I encourage you all, I'm going to be going through a, a sort of brief uh, walk through of some of those features uh, in real time. Hopefully, nothing breaks. Um, and uh, if you, you know, if you want to follow along, please do. Uh, if you log in, you can uh, or, or sign up. You can click the button at the top right. If you're going to this website that says "Request to join this organization," uh, it will send me an email, and then I can go ahead and uh, approve you, and you can start contributing. Um, but yeah, so so here is the model zoo, right? Um, this is the landing page again: huggingface.co/fathomnet. Um, yeah, briefly at the top, you have a little bit of an introduction, you know, welcome to the FeatherNet model zoo, some of the things that I was just talking about, um, and then a little bit of inf information on how to contribute. So if you have a model that you've now trained using, um, you know, some bit of FeatherNet data, we'd love if you would go through these steps, uh, you know, log in, create a new model, uh, upload your weights, your training metrics, uh, and a model card. There's a little bit more information here on what should go into that model card. So, you know, intended use, the factors uh, involved in training and deployment, uh, the metrics themselves. Uh, so this, this summary of how uh, other people can expect your model to perform, um, you know, details about the training and evaluation data that you used, and then also some steps for deployment. Um, and there's a link here to an example model card in case you want to uh, cross-reference that. Um, and then also a couple links to more documentation on, on Hugging Face in general in case um, you want to check that out. All right, but as I'm scrolling through, you'll see there's a few different uh, sections here. There's collections, there's spaces, uh, and there's models. I'm going to kind of go through these in reverse order here. Um, now, you know, if you click on these models, right, each, if you're familiar with Git, um, each one of these models is really just a uh, repository that you can upload a lot of files to. And then when you click on one, it'll take you to uh, an interface here that shows you, first of all, uh, the model card, right? what, what model you have, some tags that are associated with that, as well as a license for usage. Um, so you can go through all the details here, scrolling down, right? You can see some of the metrics, uh, training evaluation data, deployment, uh, things like that. Uh, there's a few links to, you, know, you can see, for example, like an F1 confidence curve uh, or precision recall um, and you know, get more, more details there. Uh, there's a few more tabs in the model um, model page, so you can go to the next one, which is files and versions. And this is where you'll actually find things like uh, you know the, the plots that I was just showing you, um, the model weights. So in this case, it's the best.pt. Usually, it's a large file; it sticks out that way. Um, and in this case, we've also uploaded a TensorBoard uh, TF events file. Um, don't worry if you're not familiar with that, but what it shows you is actually what's in this next tab. So you, if you click here to training metrics, you can get um, you know, these, these really granular uh, data points about how the model was trained. Um, so you can, you know, actually see, um, you know, over time as the model was training, some of the different metrics uh, that were being computed, so like mean average precision, recall. Um, and then you can also see, you know, if you want to see the, the losses. And, and these are very, very specific metrics about, um, you know, how, how these models were um, progressing as they were trained. Um, one other thing that I thought was pretty neat in this interface uh, on TensorBoard is you can, if you want, um, check out what the actual graph of the model is. So in this case, this is a YOLO V8 model, um, and you can see actually the architecture uh, of that model in this interface as well, in case you're uh, you're curious about digging into that. All right. Uh, and then finally, continuing on, this last tab that I want to point out is community. All right. So on this page, you can open up threads to you know, ask questions to the person who contributed the model, uh, open and uh, open up pull requests. If you have any suggested changes, uh, it's pretty easy to get a new discussion started. And this is linked right all with the model so that anybody else who is uh, trying to use this model you know, can also benefit from seeing all of these discussion threads and any particulars that come out of that. So that was the first sort of uh, aspect of Hugging Face. This is the core way that you can contribute your models so that other folks can use them. Um, but you know, scrolling up for a second, 
you can see these nice looking uh, panes here, uh, which are the spaces on Hugging Face. And these are spaces for experimenting. Uh, if I click on you know, the same space that I created for uh, the Megalodon model, it'll take you to this interface. Um, and you know, this is the interface that I was showing before in that screenshot. What you can do is click on an example image at the bottom, um, and you can see you know, what the model is going to output for that image. right? Um, these are all cached, so you can see the, the results here. In particular, this is a single class object detector. Uh, Lonnie will talk about more of the details uh, on the Megalodon model. Uh, right after I'm, I'm finished here, um, but you can see, you know, what what is the performance? What are the confidences uh, that this model is coming up with? And you know, like I said, you can go ahead and uh, try your own image if you like. I'm not sure what the the wait time will be on this one, um, but yeah. So there you go. Um, so I just uploaded this image from FathomNet, um, and we got you know a 92 percent confidence score that this is an object in the scene. Um, so. So yeah, so this is again, just a quick way to experiment with these different models. Uh, I encourage you all to check it out. All of these run on uh, free CPU only instances uh, of compute resources that Hugging Face give to us. So the model inference time may be slow and if, if a lot of people are uh, you know, hitting on it at the same same time, it may, um, you might be put in a little queue, um, but, uh, but check it out. Okay, and then finally, uh, last thing I wanted to point out, I've just a couple more minutes here. Um, are these collections? So if you want to organize some of those, um, it, you know, the uh, the models and the spaces into one page, uh, you can check that that out here. I've created a couple uh, for the FathomNet baseline models, so you can check those out here. Uh, Lonnie will get more into them as well, um, and as well as some, you know, the the models that we've been training um, here at Ambari. Okay, so I believe that's all I've got for you. Um, happy to take any questions. Hi, Kevin. Hi. Hey. Yeah, can, can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Hi. Yeah, so I'm Yi Chen. I'm with uh, Department of Fisheries and Oceans Canada, and I've actually been using, I think, a lot of your models, and they've worked really well. So, you know, kudos to that. I just wanted to ask, like, how do you foresee integrating these models with your, uh, I think, OVAI portal? Like, once it's available, would there be batch processing options uh, and, you know, I think uh, the ability to edit in, uh, like edit labels once they've been generated, et cetera. Yeah, so um, I, I believe so. I think the authority on that here is uh, on the call. Ben, are you are you here around? Yeah, the, the short answer is yes. Um, <clears throat> these models in our early beta testing are already integrated. As, as they get released, we kind of roll them in. Um, they run in our batch analytics process and then that's exactly correct. Once you get those outputs, then you will be able to view them in a view where you can then edit or assign labels, or you could run secondary workflows. If once you have, say like run an object detector and you wanted to run a classifier on those regions of interest, those are the types of pipelines that will be enabled via the portal. All right, perfect. Uh, just a follow up question on that, because I know like these things would require uh, like the use of GPUs, which are quite expensive. And how do you foresee the cost structure of that working? TBD. <laughs> we, we have a lot of kind of like baseline resources available for some of that, but the kind of cost recovery structure available for that is something that is still being worked on. So. Uh, while we won't be running at first on certain tiers on just pure CPUs, we have a number of kind of, like I said, base resources. Um, there is still a potential load problem associated with that that will likely have to go into kind of like tiered availability of resources depending upon cost structures. Okay, perfect. That, that's Thank a big answer to just say we're not quite sure yet. Yeah, no yeah, worries. It, I was going to I was gonna add that it is a work in progress. I mean, really what we're because we've been evaluating a number of like long-term, uh, you know, funding models that could support the the Ocean Vision AI program, of which, right, we've got these three different platforms that support. Never mind uh, people that are working in the background doing this work. Um, and so, one of the things that's kind of bubbling to the surface is uh, creation of a, a research and development collaborative organization or collaborative program. And there are ways to fund those uh, individually by by different contributors and that sort of thing. So, uh, a TBD will know more, I would say, towards the end of this summer. All right. Yeah. Thank you.